Let's see. I managed to unmute the microphone this time, so that's good. Okay, I'm making progress. All right. I have to empty out one thing here. And then I think we're going to be good to go. Let's see. Stream is looking good. Let's see who joins in. All right. I have to uh, keep reminding myself which camera to look in. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. Every morning, uh, uh, when, I, when I have a break in the action at work, I'll log into YouTube and I'll go through and uh, I'll uh, take the uh, previous live stream. Uh, when the live streams are done, it automatically goes to uh, unlisted. Uh, so unless you have the link from uh, the Fulver Tech or wherever I posted the link, uh, you really can't see it. And that's fine because that gives me an opportunity to work on the description because uh, I know on a lot of these builds that I follow, like for uh, you know Tom Slanderer and other guys that do uh, big live streams, uh, it's nice to kind of see if there's anything in the description that either, you know, if they have links to certain sections, that's great. Or if they give an overview of, of what they did, you know, especially some of these uh, uh, live uh, unboxing and, you know, uh, some of these Chinese printers that uh, some of the uh, YouTubers uh, get put together and, and do their first print on. Good evening, John. So anyway, I try to go back and put a lot of good information in the uh, description for you guys to kind of have a summary because uh, I am a clicker. I'm the kind of person I, I clip right along. Uh, I know some people uh, do a lot more editing but uh, and, and try to keep everything on topic. I just, in the live streams, I just let it go and then I put it right back out there. Uh, so this way, you know, if we're dilly-dallying on one particular spot of the build, you can just, you know, drag that mouse and just, you know, move it along to the pertinent areas that affect you. Hello, Edward. Looks like we got, I got the laptop and the other chair. Uh, the other chair, uh, just so you're aware, the uh, my other seat has been... Uh, stolen. Uh, I was going to do the electronics uh, sitting over there, but as you can see, uh, this is Molly. Uh, Molly is my long hair cat. Uh, she's uh, just, I think she's going to be three years old here real soon. But uh, yeah, so she is one of the ones, and you can see in the background the uh, empty uh, FT6 box and all the packing that, uh, that came with it. And uh, I was going to throw it out on trash day, but they're just having a field day romping around over there. So so anyway, I wanted you to meet one of the uh, executive uh, assistants here, uh, down here in the shop. So <laughs> there they are. And Theodore hasn't come downstairs yet. I am sure he will, though. So I got the coffee. Let's see. I'm going to keep on talking for a couple minutes here as people kind of file in. Tried to pick a good time. Uh, it's been kind of uh, crazy because since Monday, I, I kind of kept saying, you know, if, well, <clears throat> if I end by 1030 or 11, you know, then, you know, I can wind down, you know, uh, get my stuff done before bed and, uh, and then, you know, go to bed and get up at a decent time. And I think every night I've wound up being on here until about 12.15, 12.30. So, <laughs> and I mentioned last night very specifically, I remember, and someone volunteered to be the reminder and I think they fell asleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the, uh, the hope was last night that I would get up or go to bed at a decent time. And that was an epic fail. Yes, yes, the Moshers Anonymous Support Group. <laughs> Very good. Uh, a couple of things I want to cover, the usual housekeeping things. Uh, as always, welcome. Uh, my name is Paul. Uh, this is my channel where nerdy is cool. And uh, if you're not a regular subscriber, if you this is the first time you've seen me, hit the button in the corner, become a subscriber. This way you get notified when these things pop up. Uh, hello, Molly and family, exactly. Um, other things to notice is in the description, uh, if you're seeing this on the replay, uh, make sure you notice in the description there'll be a summary of the things or what I like to say is things to point out. So uh, what you can do is if you if, if you flip through that, you'll see some of the major uh, things that we covered and went through and uh, kind of a summary. So uh, if you watch it and clip through the video, what I do is I put in the description a few things that, well, we ran into this, but we found out this was a better way to do it. So. Things of that nature. So there is that. There is also at the bottom, there is a discount code. I think it gives you 5% off at Fulvertech. And uh, so if you're interested in buying an FT6 or an FT5 or an i3 Omega or the uh, i3, I think he's got a couple other things. Plus he has all kinds of other accessories. The point being is that if you use that discount code, one, it will save you money. Number two, it helps me because I'm an affiliate. And as you can tell, I have a <laughs> kind of a neat little homemade shop down here. So, uh, yeah, any proceeds that I get, like I said, I usually wind up buying more 3D printer toys, which wind up being video content for you guys. 
Uh, that said, there is also, uh, well, there's two ways you can do it. There is a PayPal link in the description. If you like what I'm doing and you wanna throw me a couple bucks and support my efforts, there is that link. And in the bottom of your chat buffer, there is a dollar sign. That is the PayPal, I'm, I'm sorry, that is the uh, YouTube method. Uh, of It's a super chat. And what you can do is if you wanna throw me a few bucks there, you can do it that way. Uh, I think uh, if someone was asking me the other day, uh, how much of a cut does YouTube get? I wanna say they get about you know 40%, but so what, you know? I don't have a credit card machine and with processing fees, hey, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. They're giving me a free platform. You know, if they wanna take you know a big chunk out of the donation, that's cool because I certainly could not afford to host this by myself. So thank you YouTube for offering that revenue stream. I got a lot of questions over the last couple of days, uh, now that I got those little blurbs out. Uh, I wanna talk about the FT6 build and the instructions and, and how we're doing so far. Because uh, there's a lot of people that have messaged me saying, you know, you guys have run into a lot of, uh, you know, interesting issues. You had problems with the instructions. There was a lot of things that uh, definitely need to be fixed in there or improved upon. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little leery about getting a kit like this because I'm seeing all the roadblocks, you know, that you and a lot of other people are running into. So let me comment on that. First of all, I wouldn't consider them roadblocks. And remember, the manual is like version 1.1 or whatever, something like that. And typically these manuals, oh, there you go. <laughs> Boom, coffee. Hey, look, and here it is. <laughs> How is that for service? And uh, I'll be honest, like I said, I've been doing decaf because if otherwise I'll be doing these streams till three in the morning. So thank you, sir. Okay, so what I wanna go, uh, like I said, I wanna be very, I wanna address these uh, questions because I'm not, I'm not trying to play sales guy. I'm not just saying, nah, just ignore it. If the FT6 is outstanding, you know, it's, it's just us, we're dumb. No, I mean, there's obviously a lot of room for improvement in the manual, okay? Like anything else, you know, this is version, like I said, 1.1. I've been in software support for a long time, and I can tell you that documentation goes through a lot of changes. So um, what I've been doing, and I've been commenting on the, uh, as we've gone through this, the early process of getting the printer together, you know, the ACM and aluminum pieces, wasn't so bad. Um, my grief is that on each page, in my opinion, maybe in your opinion as well too, um, the list of materials for each step should be listed on each page. Uh, for whatever reason, don't know, no conspiracy theory, maybe they forgot, maybe they're trying to keep it clean and not have a lot of stuff across the top of the screen, uh, but it, this doesn't have that. Uh, for example, and every page here, if you're using any of the ACM pieces, uh, unless you happen to remember from the very first couple pages what their names are, uh, you're scrolling back and forth to figure out, you know, what the hell is a BFP2, what the hell is a BFP7, you know, and things like that. So. That's one suggestion that I have made to uh, uh, John Folger, and uh, I'm pretty sure Chris is watching these on the replay, so I'm sure he's heard as well too. So I'm hoping between those two guys, uh, the guy that runs the company and the guy that's writing the documentation, I'm hoping that they can you know, make it happen. Because that has been the cause of a lot of frustrations as the printer gets more complicated. Uh, for example, you know, not knowing, for example, the ACM pieces, that's one gotcha. The other thing is, for example, when we were putting the uh, lead screw in, um, there were a couple spots here where it would be nice to know that it didn't say how far down the lead screw should go into the bearing. Uh, you know, that would have been really good to know because there's a lot of other printers where the lead screw sits within the housing of either it's plastic or it sits in a bearing or in this case, I thought it was going to sit in the ACM. No, it doesn't. Uh, so, you know, just those details would be great. As we've gotten to the electronics, for example, my board didn't have the uh, drivers installed on it, the separate drivers. So we spent a lot of time wondering, well, I'm pretty sure these stepper drivers go on like this, but let's flip through the documentation and see if it mentions it anywhere. It does not. It just mentions which way to orient the heat sinks. So a little bit of a gotcha there. And last night we saw a lot of, as we're doing a lot of the wiring for the stepper motors, I mean, there is four or five different lengths of stepper motors uh, wires and you know if you're an experienced builder you can kind of sort out that okay the extruders are the furthest one away from the control board so those are probably going to get the longest ones but what about these other things uh, so what I've given for feedback uh, to John and uh, I'm hoping that Chris has seen the video from last night is that you know we need the details okay um, here's the reason why um, I know that 
between a lot of the guys here that are watching the video. Um, you know, if you guys have, you know, other FT products, you know, we know how to build printers or we can kind of, you know, fix our way through it. But for a lot of people, you know, they may have printers like, for example, over here, like an Ultimaker 2, they may have a CR10, and they may have decided to take the plunge into something big like a kit. So the documentation, you know, just needs to <laughs> remember the audience, okay? When you're writing, you always want to remember your audience. So, uh, you know, we we understand that we're, you know, we may be dealing with, you know, rank beginners. So we just have to make sure that the documentation uh, doesn't assume anything, you know. Uh, we don't want to assume that every FT6 customer already has an FT5, so they've been through this before. So, yes, okay, so I'm getting some feedback here from LaserMan. Yeah. All the way down to Australia, yeah. It'd be nice to see ribbon cables for the stepper motors instead of uh, loose wire. Yeah, well, and, and to their credit, Again, now they have these PCBs. Uh, before, you had to do a lot of these uh, couplers for these stepper wires. Not the worst thing ever. Quite frankly, I, I'm not scared of soldering. I would much rather have the kit say, you need to solder this. Or you can buy those uh, solder sleeves. I mean, it's a little heat shrink tube. It's got a little thing of solder in the middle. You put the wires in there, you hit it with a heat gun, and the whole thing shrinks up, the solder melts, and you got a solid connection. Now, the con to that is if you ever have to undo that, hmm, you know, so uh, the fact that we're using a lot of connectors, you know, uh, you know, gives you the ability to, you know, unravel and undo things. So, so anyway, I just wanted to address those questions before we get back in the building because uh, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to uh, my friend Matt Phillips and I was talking to a few other guys saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing this, but there's a few things in here and I'm, I'm trying to search for the right words. I'm loving the kit and I'm having fun with the process. It's just that I'm spending so much time trying to figure out some of the basics. It seems like it's taking me a lot longer to build this thing because, you know, I'm having to play this lottery of, well, which wire is it, you know, uh, and, and things like that. For example, you know, we have to wire uh, a long wire tonight uh, from the uh, uh, hot end cartridge all the way back to the board. And as I was looking through the packing, I was trying to find you know, the right wires. Uh, the instruction shows red wire, and so I was assuming that I must use red wire. No, we're using a black wire. So it's things like this. If, if they can improve the documentation, uh, and I'd be happy to, I've been offering the feedback right now, for example, and you guys are offering feedback. So it is my hope that they will take the feedback and make the documentation even better so that guys like you uh, that don't have the kit yet, or maybe you're waiting for yours to show up and you're going, oh boy, what am I in for? <laughs> uh, you know, they'll, they'll make these improvements. Now, there's a other YouTuber out there, Lord Beowulf, he's posted a lot of videos, and they're all very negative. They're all very complaining, whiny, whiny, whiny. And to me, as someone that has been on that side of what John Fulber is doing, you know, it's one thing when someone is complaining, 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 complaining. It's one thing when a guy says, I like what you're doing, but here's an opportunity to make a few improvements. That's constructive criticism, and that's what I'm hoping to offer here. So that the experiences that you guys and I am going through will make it a better product for the rest of you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, it looks like she gave, him, gave me back my chair. Uh, let's see, uh, look at the comments real quick. Yeah, um, like I said, I mean, you're talking, this is my eighth 3D printer uh, in my third Fogotech, and the FTI 3 Mega was a lot of fun to put together. Uh, the FT5, oh boy, that was a toughie. That, that was a hard build. Uh, I'll be honest, after I did that, I was like, I don't know if I'd do this again. Uh, since then, I have, uh, I have a CR10, I have a CR10S, I have a TiVo Tornado, uh, you know, and I have a GTEC A10. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot of experience to offer saying, look, you know, they're, the competitors sell these printers for $400 and some change. And sure, all you have to do is bolt in a couple of things and you're off and running. However, if you need any level of support, if you have any issues with any of the parts or what have you, you're on your own. Uh, you're on the Facebook groups asking people for help. Uh, you're either on Alibaba or these other uh, sites, you know, basically, you know, buying your own parts and trying to solve it. Whereas with John and their stuff, 
they offer a great kit, they offer support, you know, and if they have questions, they take it from there. Yeah, <laughs> good hater, exactly. Well, I think saying that you're a beta tester might be a little harsh because let's face it, I am not the guru, okay? You know, if, if you're watching me and if you watched all my videos so far, you're realizing that I make a lot of mistakes along the way. So, you know, you know, don't take it as, well, Paul said it's a, it's a complex kid and I'm not sure. You know, well, no, Paul has, Paul has a lot of fun doing this, but I reach out to you guys and to my friends saying, you know, <laughs> maybe my gray matter just isn't working today, but, you know, hey, you know, I have some questions. So, I'm uh, looking at the chat buffer here as I go here. You're right, JMTX. Yep, you're right. And that's why I'm taking a minute before we jump into the build here to, to talk about that real quick. Um, and GTEC, I can go on a whole tangent about that. They, they, they approached me about, you know, getting one of their printers. They offered me a $20 off. We, um, it showed up and uh, the lead screw was bent. Uh, the control knob didn't work at all. Uh, the people that were very eager to sell it to me when I had issues, it went suddenly silent. And then when I posted my video saying, here's my first thoughts, oh, oh, the outrage. Uh, but I did gain a lot of friend requests from a lot of people at GTEC because apparently that's their way of doing support. They, they friend request you. And frankly, if, if you're a friend on my Facebook, all you're going to see is gym progress pictures. You're going to see a, a CAD pictures, 3D printers, uh, progress pictures of my R2D2s and BB-8 and whatever, you know? So if they really want to see that kind of stuff, fine. But what I really want to hear from them is, hey, we sent you a crap printer. Let's send you a whole brand new one or something like that. They did send me replacement parts. Uh, the long story short on that was they did send me a, a new lead screw. It was the wrong one. Uh, it was 50 millimeters too tall. And uh, so I used my own parts for the rest. And they have a couple people that are in their little network of support. Uh, I don't know if they're officially employees or not. But it wasn't until one of these guys saw my live stream and said, yeah, you do have a bad board. He contacted GTEC and said, this guy, Paul, he's got a really he's got a lousy board. You should send him a new one. And they said, okay, we'll do it. Six weeks after I told them the same thing. So, but what's crazy is the GTEC has turned out to be one of my best printers because I've gutted it. <laughs> <laughs> I've updated the firmware. Uh, I've got the 3D Touch, BL Touch knockoff on there. Uh, I spent a lot of time tuning the uh, Simplify 3D profile, which people keep asking me for. Like, hey, can we have you? Can we have a copy of your profile? And usually I would say yes. And I'll share whatever I've done with S3D or Cure with anyone. Uh, but on this one, because it's been so hard fought, uh, the last thing I want to do is help GTEC out. So anyway, I don't want to rant. <laughs> So that's where I'm at. The, uh, the takeaway here is I'm enjoying the kit. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of little frustrations that wouldn't take a lot of time and effort on their side to cure. So I don't want you guys to be scared seeing this and going, oh, geez, I just ordered one. Maybe I should cancel it. Or maybe you're thinking about getting one and going, I don't know. You know, Paul and a lot of other guys are on that group. They're having issues every day. Hey, it's a, it's a new kit. It's a new printer. It's going to have its growing pains, and uh, I don't have any regrets buying it. So uh, I wish things were a little bit better laid out, and I'm offering that feedback and sharing with you guys. Just scrolling through the comments here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So... Any questions? Um, and I'll wait a second here. I, I know you guys will wonder what the hell I'm doing here. There's probably a 30 second delay between what I say and what comes across the chat buffer. Uh, build time? Well, build time is going to depend on your experience. Like I said, some of the issues I'm running into, you know, someone that's, that's built four or five printers in the past or been doing 3D printing forever, is probably no, no time whatsoever. Me, I'm one of those guys where I go a couple steps, I double check, I make sure. So, yeah, I, I go slow. Uh, one of the time estimates that someone mentioned in the group was they were saying about 18 hours. So, uh, you know, essentially a weekend. You know, if, if you put, you know, two full days into it, you'll have it together fairly quick. 
And uh, especially with these videos being out there, I'm hoping that these will help other guys. Um, you know, when they start putting their printer together and they start going through the documentation, they can go, wait a minute, you know, that, that, that nerdy Paul guy they were into this, let's see what he did. So that's why I hope this resource is out there and it's helpful. And there was something else I was going to mention, but because I'm old, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, this heat bed has uh, two uh, white wires, and it has a, uh, I mean, it's a big giant mat, and then it has the uh, two leads for the uh, thermoresistor. And because this thing is so huge, one of the things that I did, and I think it was Z1 Power that suggested it, uh, I had some additional extra E3D uh, hot end uh, thermoresistors, the bulb type. So what I did is I, and I think you can see this in video number three, uh, but what I did is I added those so that, uh, you know, if the bed thermoresistor on this thing fails someday and you don't want to try to peel a, you know, you know a, a three foot by one foot yeah, silicone mat, uh, those extra ones are already there. All I have to do is, is run the wire. As a matter of fact, one of the things we're going to do tonight, uh, those wires are kind of dangling right there. So we're going to do a little bit of wiring management. Hello. Thank you. Someone donated five bucks. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. And the other thing I want you guys to know is, you know, the uh, what's, what's been kind of fun is, you know, Chris Soros, the guy who wrote the manual, uh, and uh, John Folger have been participating in the uh, in the live streams and the builds and offering a lot of feedback. So, uh, so they're well aware that you know there's a few things that could be a little bit, uh, you know, written a little bit better, some additional directions. So, uh, for example, the extruders. I had a really hard time with the extruders. <coughs> I was trying to put the bearing in first, but apparently putting the spring in first goes a whole lot easier. And the other thing, I, I hope you guys are enjoying the... I'm, I'm sorry that my furnace kicks on every couple of minutes. I am up here in Maine. Uh, I am 200 miles north of Boston, so it's still very much the tail end of winter over here. And uh, so you'll hear that furnace kick up every now and then. I tried to keep it fun with the uh, different camera angles. As you can see, uh, let's see, the uh, the cat has surrendered the chair. Woo uh, this top camera has been kind of popular. This way you can have a bird's eye view of what's going on and where I'm at. And uh, then, of course, we have the instruction camera. So there you go. And I'm still waiting for a part to show up for my Canon uh, so that I can capture the HDMI output from the Canon. Yeah, it's, it's windy, uh, windy like crazy uh, tonight, but it's supposed to stay above freezing. All right, so that said, are there any more questions uh, about the build or any feedback uh, that I can offer or uh, give you guys before I jump into the electronic fun? I mean, I'll, I'll of course answer them as we go, but I figured while I'm right in front of the screen here. Laser, uh, what software do you use for the channel? Uh, on my recorded videos, um, I'm usually uh, using Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, uh, CC 2019, uh, on the videos uh, that you know are going on the T7i. Uh, for my live streams, uh, I bounce between Streamlabs OBS and OBS Live. Uh, this laptop is a relatively new laptop. I got it about three months ago, and uh, it set me back quite a bit because it has a NVIDIA Quadro card built into it. Uh, it's a, a Lenovo P72. So what's happening is that Lenovo card is enabling the uh, encoder, uh, which would usually be, be a big CPU, uh, CPU load. Uh, it's all going through that uh, beefy video card. So Streamlabs OBS is what we're using right now. And uh, there's a lot of, this, this OBS is open source, okay? So Streamlabs made their version and it works pretty well. Uh, and then the OBS Live is, is not as interactive as Streamlabs, but the, the big thing is how well they run on the uh, whatever computer you're running them on. The uh, thermal resistors, okay. Well, what I did is <laughs> before I adhered the uh, mat to the uh, print bed, what I had done is, of course, I, I flipped over the mat and uh, I peeled off the, uh, the waxy paper there. And what I did is I... Uh, as, as nicely as I could, uh, I unfurled my E3D V6 uh, bulb thermosistors, laid them in there, got them to stick to the adhesive surface, uh, 
flipped the thing over, made sure I was lined up like the direction said, and uh, I used a great big socket and just kind of rolled because uh, adhesives respond well to pressure. So that's how I got them in there. Hello, Minnesota maker. Did we resolve the bed binding last night? I think overall we did, and we shall see. It seems like it's doing better. It's still a little stiff on the last uh, two or three inches on the uh, bed. So is it 100% fixed? Uh, I think this is one of those ones where if I try to do it by hand, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, if I pull on the belts, it almost gets all the way to the bottom without issue. So the you know unless i'm going to be printing something you know 400 millimeter tall i don't think it's going to be that big an issue uh, having said that i'm sure we have more tuning we have to do uh, i'll be interested to see how uh, close everything is for printing so there we go so do i think i saw that i think we got closer and the secret was to loosen the lower uh, those clamps that hold the chrome rods we loosen those guys up on the bottom uh, things kind of snapped out and breathed, and uh, uh, that was one of the uh, tips that uh, one of the viewers made, saying, you know, if you do that, you know, things kind of fall into place, and then when it's all happy, tighten her up. So <laughs> that's what we did. So I don't know how many people have ordered their printers or uh, as a result of watching this, but if you have, very cool. I think the uh, turnaround time from order to shipping is still about three weeks. Uh, maybe John is in the audience here and he can chime in on that, but I know they have been playing catch up. And uh, the good news is, is the deliveries um, that have been going on, I haven't seen any more destroyed boxes. I know a lot of people were getting some pretty mangled boxes just because this kit is so heavy and the cardboard was not quite surviving the trip. But uh, mine came in and it, it was, it did very well. Of course, I'm one state away from him, so I didn't have to make a giant transatlantic trip. So there you go. Okay, if I've answered your questions, what I'll do is I'm going to hop over and we're going to look at the directions real quick to figure out where we're at. And let's go over here. I will try to remember to speak up because the microphone is on one end of the room and I'll be at the other end. Let's see. Um, we were at the point here. Isn't it amazing to see how far down we are through all this? Okay. Yeah, as I look at some of these steps, I'm like, oh, yeah, that one sucked. Oh, that was no fun. Oh, that kind of sucked. <laughs> uh, I did mention to John a couple of things. You know, uh, it would be cool if they uh, uh, included uh, uh, washers. Okay, we'll look for that in a second here. Uh, that was one of the other suggestions that I made. I said, you know, look, you know, there's a lot of spots here where these small screws are making contact with the ACM at the top and uh, there's an opportunity for that to get dimpled or pimpled or whatever uh, especially where you know you're dealing with the smaller uh, screw heads like the m3s where they come through the ACM uh, so I that was my suggestion uh, I said you know they don't cost a whole lot I would definitely you know throw in a package of number six and number 10 washers uh, just so that I mean this is a beautiful material and uh, you, know, you don't want to dimple it up by over tightening something <laughs> oh, house fixing. Yeah, I need to do that too. Yeah, this uh, April 15th, I will have been in this, I will have purchased and owned this home for 15 years. So, but we got to get this printer going because if you look behind me, I have a BB-8 sitting on his frame and he's stinking naked. So we need to get those panels printed out. And it'd be really cool to do them two or three at a time on this big printer versus running my other seven all at once. Okay, so I think I got the right page here because, okay, that's the power. We did those. We did a neat um, customization with, uh, oh yeah, the electronics box. I also gave some feedback on that. If you, if you tighten down uh, segments of that electronics box, getting the other pieces in there really, really sucks. Uh, let's see, there goes the furnace. Got a couple of uh, PMs where people are going, what in the devil are you running in the background for a turbine? Like, no, that's my furnace. Oil burning furnace. Okay, I am looking over here to see where we're at. So we did this last night. For whatever reason, I 
and then in my kit, I ran out of M3 nuts. So uh, if you are awaiting your kit to arrive, I would certainly uh, encourage you to make a trip to your big box store, hardware store, and stock up on M3 nuts because that, unless they added more, you will run out. Okay, so we have right here, we have the hot end wires. Okay, so this is where we're at right here because, and this is what was, we were doing late last night, was we were trying to figure out where these go uh, because we kind of said, okay, fine, let's just move to the next step. This PCB right here is nice because with the other Fogatech kits, you had to run a bunch of couplers, you know, to, to drive, you know, uh, multiple steppers and get that one connection back at the uh, MKS board. But this worked really well. The only thing about uh, uh, this part right here was that those connectors, the, the prongs stick through the back of the PCB, which is normal, uh, but their attachment for this was to uh, place it, uh, uh, stick it up there and then hold it in there with the VHB, which is very high bond 3M tape. Because that's not a perfectly flat surface, because those pins stick out the back of the PCB, uh, that your mileage may vary on that. Now, if someone made a 3D printed piece that that will sit in, and then what you can do is then you can put the adhesive on, on that, I guess. Uh, I'd have to look it up again. What I opted to do, and it was probably cringeworthy, this PCB has two holes, so what I did is I drilled two holes in the ACM, and it is now bolted in place. Uh, here's my thought. First of all, uh, this printer is gonna generate vibrations. So if anything's gonna wiggle loose, it's gonna wiggle loose over here. And the other thing is, is you have three connectors here. So these wires are gonna dangle and droop whatever. So that's additional load on the part. So I just didn't want to be in the middle of print and then just find that thing hanging on the bed. <laughs> so it's much easier to, drew, to uh, drill two holes in there and mount the guy up and, and call it good. I put, uh, some spare nylon spacers I had kicking around to hold mine in place. Now this next picture, okay, so this is gonna be where we're mounting the uh, uh, stepper cable to the Z socket, okay? So we're not gonna go there yet because we have to go back over here and we need to get these hot end wires. These hot end wires, <laughs> it, this is gonna use a lot of cable uh, and I'll show you why. Okay, that part's been done. Let me move. It. And again, this breaks down into dual. So essentially, what we have to do is we have to run. Um, and again, these red wires right here. This is the uh, power that goes to the uh, heater cartridge, uh, which you know, of course, is by your nozzle. Uh, so I had some questions about the gauge of wire for the amount of power that's going through there at 24 volts. So as you can see, the head moves and what has you. So we have to make sure we have tons of wire. <laughs> Uh, to make sure it'll reach the entire bed. So that's going to be kind of interesting. And we have the same story here with these Ethernet cables. We have a lot of Ethernet cable. So wiring management is going to be a lot of fun on this printer. And I don't say that sarcastically. I'm just saying <laughs> there's a lot to do. So now i got to go back a couple steps here. Here we go. Okay. And uh, let me kick over to the other camera. Sorry, I've been so talky-talky, but I wanted to make sure you guys were fully up-to-date on what we're doing. And I had some additional lighting. I would like to charge it up. So let's uh, light this guy up. And then the next thing I have to do is move the other camera. Pardon, you're going to hear some clanking around. I do apologize. Other people have said in the past, and the other videos going, oh, listening to that microphone clank around. Best sound ever, said nobody. There. Uh, I didn't get the touch screen. I'm, I'm kind of having buyer's remorse on that in two ways. I would like to get the touch, the, the seven inch touch, but I was at the point when I was ordering this printer, I was like, oh boy, I, get, I just paid a bunch of bills and you know, if I can save a little bit of money, let me see if I can save a little bit of money. 
So I did not get it. So I have the uh, you know the LCD screen that will be installed on this guy. Okay, so there we are, and the laptop is up and running. Good, good. So we have this black wire. We have a lot of it. And I got the directions over here that reminds me what is what. So the fun part is going to be trying to determine how much of this wire I'm going to need. So I should probably move the gantry to its furthest position away. Let's get these stepper wires out of here. I had them mounted up high so that the, uh, the cats wouldn't get to them. Okay, so let's get you guys mounted here and mounted here. Okay. So that carriage has been done. Um, oh, you know what? I left something upstairs. Okay, so I'm going to leave the direction screen up for a moment, real quick. Because that's where I'm at. I'm going to mute this and be back in a minute. Okay, I apologize guys. I just discovered that, you know, uh, if you unmute the microphone, you guys will hear what I'm saying. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Okay, let's see. We get this guy all lit up. So I'm guessing the best way to do this is start at the top and figure how much excess wire I'm going to have because we have to do this twice. So, let's see, this thing is going to be... Try to, uh, let's see, is this going... Yep, this is going to go through here. And... I'm trying to uh, bear in mind that uh, eventually I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> this will... Uh, have an enclosure to it. Okay. Uh, okay let's get to a top view so you guys can see the fun I'm having here. All right. So I got the. Well, 
wire here. Okay, so you have to be at the furthest over here. Got it. So we will, now what is the best way to run that wire? Because in the future we are going to want to have, uh, first of all, this wire should be under the, uh, under the Bowden tube. Or probably part of the entire, see, I don't know if I want the Bowden tubes to be part of the same bundle of stuff. <laughs> Right here is where heat is going to be connected. Actually, it's, well, once I remove the stopper, it's actually going to be over here. So if I take into account this being mounted like so, actually, what I can do, I printed a couple of clips that come in handy as holders on uh, 2020 rail. There we go. I got them all over my FT5. All right, that will hold this guy. Mostly in place. So I should be able to tuck this guy under the rail here. But it would almost be easier to, uh, because it's coming up from over here, and I'm all the way, because what's happened is I move the extruders, but. Just trying to, in my mind, hoping I have enough cable to, or wire to, to do what I'm pondering here. Okay. One more clip. doing here is this is the end of the wire that will go into the uh, heater PCB. It is going to go under this front 2020. <laughs> it will then go and, and make a 90 degree turn. Boy, that's a long length of wire. But, and then it will Slide you over. Okay, and then it will go down. Okay, I'm using a, a lot of wire. If I, <laughs> if this is my only source of wire, I will uh, have exhausted. I won't have enough left over for a second one. Well, oh, as far as uh, how this guy is uh, set up, well, that's uh, let me see your comment here real quick. Right. So, okay, let me let me explain here. So what we're trying to do is our, this is the heater wire that goes to the PCB on the uh, on the hot end. Um, so that wire, what we have to do is we this wire has to go all the way across. Um, the only other way I can think to do it without having would be to just have it hang free, and that would eliminate this great big, you know, ninety degree turn. If I'm trying to route around here, where's my uh, there's my end of my wire. So yeah, I mean, I can just have this dangling out here, and then uh, because I'm going to have an Ethernet cable that's going to be this. Well, actually, I actually want to have uh, one Ethernet cable dangling on. Yeah. So it's just a matter of wire management. <laughs> Hey Z, you're just the guy I wanted to ask questions to. Let me get back to the top view. 
So we are at the point where we are adding the wiring to E0. We're going from E0. I haven't wired anything yet here. I'm just temporarily snapping things in here. So I have two thoughts. I haven't decided which one I like best, okay? So I've got the black wire, which is going to go to the uh, heater. You know, the two, uh, there's two connections here for that. My first thought is to just have it be a straight connect. Right now I have it in the most, the furthest position where it's going to need the most wire. So my first theory is, well, if I want, I can just make it a straight shot and then, you know, it'll hang in the air somehow <laughs> uh, with a cable, you know, harness or something. Then it goes down at the uh, side here where it feeds down into the electronics box and, and there we go. That uses a lot less wire. The other thought I was toying with uh, was to try to make it nice and neat, you know, have it, um, well, I really can't have it go into the rail because if this thing moves, it's going to pop out of here. So I will shut up and see what you say. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, at least what I can do is I can at least start and put a uh, connector on this guy. Yeah, because that's, that's, okay, that's interesting you say that because I'm trying to figure out in my mind how that should look. Because, <laughs> uh, again, our documentation just shows it uh, running alongside the rail and then, see, in the original setup, the extruders would be back here. You'd run this wire right to the extruder and then you would, you know, have it coming off of there, you know. Uh, if I have it coming off the extruders over here, I'm using about, you know, uh, you know, three feet more wire. That's what I'm debating. So what I can at least do is I can at least uh, connect. I'm going to get a furl connector for that. have one end in here yeah well I can certainly leave it loose until the Ethernet gets plugged in which I believe is one of the next steps here yeah this is one of those steps where I, I wish there was more information but Just a little bit. Okay, shorten the connector a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna snap the crank. Alright, there is a mini screwdriver right here. Alright, so the first wire. I'm just trying to make sure I, I've given myself enough space here. Well, that's a pretty small contact. And it may not like that for a I may have to go to a smaller one.
Yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, I got the black ones here too. Uh, there we go. Wait. Huh. Oh, jeez. I think that fur rod just broke inside the connector. Double check. I don't understand why this is going at an angle. It's been one of those nights. I don't understand. All right, you seem okay. Okay, you seem okay. We're officially getting toasty. <laughs> oh, something lit up. Okay. Let me see we're working around here and start to get a get toasty warm. Alright, let's, uh, here's my water. Thought for sure that that fur oil size would work, but I should have checked that. That's, that's bad on me. Boy, were you able to get a fur oil connector to fit in this thing? <laughs> or did you just wind up going bare wires? The KFL-8, well, it, it arrived. I got it in there and it's working a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd say quite awesome, but it, it does seem better. Okay, this one's gonna work after all. Okay, we will go with white. Um, it's still, it doesn't just slam right down. You know, it's still, At the last two or three inches, it's you still kind of question your sanity, but it seems to be working better. Uh, when I was spinning it with the uh, the belt, it seemed to move okay. All right. Yeah, I I don't know quite with the answer to that, to making that work where it is. <laughs> okay, black ethernet wire. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but I, I know you're supposed to go in here somewhere. Okay, I got wires everywhere. Or did I make it the Ethernet? Now the Ethernet wire uh, won't fit out the uh, within the frame because the connector is too big. So it looks like it goes outside the frame. Uh, which is it's kind of too bad they didn't leave an opening for that to. Uh, to go through. Um, I 
I mean, does it just embiggened? <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's a, uh, the, the one directly behind the uh, motors. Oh. It just seems if you're going to be running all these wires, and you know you're going to be running all these wires, it would make sense that the openings within the frame would would be there. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm just I'm thinking out loud. You know, if you know you're going to be running two Ethernet wires, why not have that opening? It does fit through. Huh. Are we looking at the same hole? This one over here. Right behind the stepper motor. Well, I'm pushing like crazy on that end. That will not fit. Um, do you have to remove the plastic notch, the plastic protector thing back over here? I mean, I could see what that would probably, if I get rid of that uh, rubber back. Um, Looking at the whole sliding thing here. Mine is not great to be sliding. Ah, see, they, these are the things that drive uh, people crazy. You know, with the, with the documentation, you know, you know, you're running a lot of wires, so it'd be nice to know where to run them and how. Okay, you're saying you slid this guy off, huh? Well, I'm not having any luck doing that. I mean, I can get rid of this piece. Uh, where's my uh, snip? I'm trying not to sound like I'm complaining, but it, like I said, um, I am wasting a lot of time trying to run wires that if it was mentioned in the instructions, it would save everyone, including them, a lot of complaints. <laughs> okay, so I've gotten rid of the uh, rear rubber piece. Let's see if you can fit through here now. Yep, I can now. Okay, so if you get rid of the you get rid of the rubber piece on the back, all as well. It like I said, the biggest issue is it just sucks that you're left to figure it out. Yeah, the black rubber car, I just snipped it right off. But now I'm gonna say something out loud, and I don't mean to sound insulting saying this. I'm just saying that as I'm going through these steps and I'm looking at the documentation, it's obvious to me that <laughs> they haven't assembled one of these printers using those instructions. Um, because I think they would realize that, oh, that's not very clear, we should fix that. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be snide or whatever, I'm just saying, you know, if I was, uh, if I was in their shoes, I'd be like, oh crap, we gotta, we gotta make that more clear. You know, there's a difference between, you know, offering a, a little feedback versus, you know, like that other guy there, you know, wah, 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 bitch, bitch, bitch. Okay, so I am... 
Hopefully this camera angle shows that I have the Ethernet wire run. And I got this little clip right here I don't need to remove. I'm just going to use this big, ginormous, there we go, clip right here, mm, there, to help sort some of these wires out. So I hope that makes sense. Like I said, I'm, I'm just thinking that if I was going to, if I was going to talk someone through how to get through this step, you know. Okay, so that is my thin resistor. I got too much stuff up here. Well, I'm glad you're here to chime in. All right, so Ethernet, Ethernet, where are you? You are right here. So we are going to have a bucket. Literally, can have extra Ethernet cable to kind of bundle up in there, which is fine. We will, we will do that later. So that one is in there. Okay, so so these guys are going to have to somehow be supported. <laughs> I'm just not sure how. Um, oh, wait a minute. You said something and, and now, now it's clicking. You're saying that with your wiring bundle, what you did is you attached it to the bowings. And that's a really good idea. You are indicating that you kind of tag these guys. And I'm just going to put something temporary right here so that if if I'm completely wrong, you can say Paul, 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 Paul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is what I have just done over here. Let me. Um, oops, my phone's in the way. Let me. You can kind of see it right here. So what I've done is I've just zip tied. These are the two wires going into the print head. Well, one of them anyway. I got to run the other one. I want to say snip it. Yes, otherwise the carriage is going to snag it. Yeah, that's uh, it's one of my concerns already. I really want to rewire this with some silicone wire anyway. Um, I almost think that Kind of like what I've seen with a lot of the FT5s. I would almost want to see like maybe a, you know, a little 2020 piece over here, or maybe like the spool holder over here, <laughs> and have the wires come across that right smack in the middle. Because I don't, I don't really see myself using his spool holder. Because here's the thing: when this thing uh, moves over and and goes over here, you got a crap load. See how the bowden and all that stuff is gonna fold in. So we definitely have a, and the fact that they don't have anything, anything mentioning the, the cable and wire management is just, uh, I'm trying to find the word. Yeah, because you, you mentioned a good point about the carriage snagging and, and things like that. I almost think, uh, you know, something should go across the top middle, you know, whether it be, you know, I, I've seen this on other printers where they attach, you know, a small amount of bungee or those keychains, you know, where someone's badges and has the retractable, you know, little uh, cord to it. I mean, just something that's above all of this that will take up that, you know, uh, that slack. Hmm. All right. I'm just thinking out loud on what the better way to do this is. 
Yes, yeah, all, all the big printers are going to suffer from this. Okay, well, uh, let's see, let me go over here, and my big question now is now that I've done all of this, once I snip the wire, do I have, do I have enough wire to do it again? Okay, so... This guy is coming down through here, and here. <laughs> I can tell you right now, running this cable the way I, like running this wire the way I have, I will not have enough for the second lead. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because, uh, and I'm, yeah, because with this running up behind the motor and, and then going way to the very end where the gantry is. Well, that's a, yeah, uh, you could, sh yeah, that would save you, you know, uh, 500 millimeter, you know, going, so you're saying coming down through here might be a bit better. See, that's just, when you look at these instructions and you look at, okay, what the next step is and the next step is, it's just, these aren't hard steps, but. And. this through one of the uh, uh, that's why I don't read instructions yeah so you ran it across the front 2020 and then down the LC hole um, you could also go through these air vents I guess If that makes any sense. Yeah, I can tell you right now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to run out of wire, which doesn't make me happy. All right, so if you're wondering what you just logged into, we are going through the steps of wiring um, the E1 extruder, and the instructions are lacking on the best way to route this through. Um, you know, they indicate red wires, maybe black wire, you know, things like that. Um, so we're, we're trying to stay positive, you know, whatever, we'll move on. But... Uh, Um, now, yeah, actually I haven't got to that point. Where does my LCD go? <laughs> I should probably look ahead before I run wires into any openings. Let's make sure that I'm not going to wind up uh, needing them. Okay. Hello. Um, 
Krishna Sang Baba. Oh, we just gained a subscriber. Very cool. Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's go to the top view here. Well, I'm trying to follow the instructions and trying to make a good video series on, hey, you follow the instructions, here's, here's how you do it. <laughs> um, oh, so that's supposed to do on the front. Okay, so I'm looking at this right here. So that's... So I have room back here for those wires to snake through. So that's not going to be that big a deal. Okay. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to look ahead and not regret, <laughs> you know, doing some of these things. been done. We haven't done this guy yet. Yeah, we're still trying to run these wires. So the hot end wires, really, no matter how you slice it, because how do I... Here's, here is the rub, and I'm probably repeating myself. This is the furthest position away from the bed, uh, and these wires have to reach, you know, order the you know, heat the hot end. Um, that's my Ethernet cable. Okay, this is my wire now for the uh, hot end. And what I could do is, based on feedback from Z1, we can run that inside of here because there's enough of a gap between the ribbon cables and the mount to make it work. My concern is I now won't, <laughs> I will not have enough, they did not give me enough wire to, uh, to do the second one. Okay, let me go back to my seat. Oh, joy. Hey, what are you doing over there? Hey, you're in my spot. <laughs> yeah, you, you're in my spot. Yeah, you might have it up high. Yeah, that was, the, see, that was the one thing about the, L, that was the one thing about the LCD setup that uh, I wasn't crazy about was, uh, that mounts to the bottom and you know this printer is so tall you know it's going to be mounted on something a bit lower and i didn't like the idea of leaning down trying to access that panel okay so my concern right now is i i've got the bed to the furthest position that the wire needs to reach uh, i've got it going into the box okay i gotta take molly out of the chair sorry babe Alright, so the trouble now is once I snip this, uh, the I won't have enough wire for the second one. Oops, I didn't swap over the, the camera angle. Yes, I did. There it goes. <sighs> So this is coming in through the LCD. You're gonna need to come in and do a 180. Oh, somehow can I make this at least somewhat clean?
Well, that's, I, I don't know. That's, that's a very good question. A very good question I don't have a very good answer to. <laughs> but we'll find out. one down is fan and then it's let's see the second from the bottom right and it doesn't matter polarity okay that's gonna work okay let's see when you know you're getting old and you can't read the bottom print. <laughs> Camera, here we go. Okay, let's look at the pictures. Okay, the bottom two are HE1, and the second two are HE01, okay. Side, but we'll trim it. There. I just, anytime I trim it, I like to crimp it again to make sure it's all good. second dude. Gracious, we might actually have like <laughs> within six inches. It was close.
trim that guy up. Where is the uh, blue guy? Uh, I had some of the uh, zip wire, which is, you know, the black and white, you know, where it's uh, stuck together. You can peel it apart, but um, it would have been nice to have these guys, you know, uh, stuck. Uh, okay, so this is going to, all right, so these guys are going to part ways. Lowest build ever, yes. Uh, what do you, uh, uh, I don't quite understand why you don't run a Cat5 parallel to yours. Well, I do have plenty of, uh, that's a good point. I mean, I could. I mean, I got plenty of extra Ethernet cable. <laughs> so, yeah, I can uh, definitely uh, bring that in there. Good point. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Because of anything, the stiffer Ethernet cable might help us out a little bit. Let's, uh, now that we have all the wires kind of working together here. need to, uh, actually I found it on Amazon the other day, you know, the, uh, the other kind of tube wrap there where it's a spiral bound wrap. I just ordered some of that. That would be very, very handy for this. Uh, how does that look? 
Does that look a bit better? Or actually, I should probably go to the other camera here. So you can see that I've kind of got these guys wrapped up together. I think, uh, you know, if there was a, I'm real tempted to use a spool holder and just have something hanging above, you know, just to hold everything. At this point, I could mount it from the ceiling, maybe from where that camera angle is. I got that clip that can push these wires in flush into there because I do have plenty of Ethernet. Yeah, I got a bunch of the, uh, as you can see up here, okay, so we got this guy kind of hanging because it's, it's you know, it's, it's a little bit tight because it's at its tightest point here at the furthest end over, over here. Still need to do something with the extra wires here from the hot end. I still have uh, you know, the wiring from the probe kind of in the way here. Uh, and you know what? These push connectors piss me off. Molly, don't play the wires. Yeah, these spring loaded connector blocks and I are, are not friends. Just noticing these wires are popping out of these spring connector blocks again. I wonder what it would cost to get one of these PCB pieces and not have these connectors on it. See, with those springs, the minute you pull on those wires, it pops right out. And guess what the printhead does? The printhead pulls back and forth. So, <laughs> just, ah. I don't understand. Hey, 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 stop playing with hacking. So, the point I'm trying to make here is, without ranting, is that these, I would never put spring connectors on a moving part. Well, no, you can't put a dropper secure tight in there because it's facing downward. <laughs> um, let me let me give you a better view, so you don't think I'm a crazy man. Well, crazier than I already am. It's uh, these guys. This one here, uh, I can't get the focus to play nice. It just, uh, the minute you move that carriage, they, uh, they pop out. Okay, this camera's not focusing well, so I apologize for that. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Edward. <laughs> uh, for dual extruders, I actually I have no desire to print in two colors of PLA or whatever material. I, if I was going to have dual extruders, my 
biggest hope would be to have two separate extruders that one could do you know the PVA water soluble support and then in the other material but that requires uh, you know two separate print nozzles Coffee. Let's get back to this. E3. What are you doing in my chair? Go, go, go. Come on. Go play your brother. Alright. Alright, so this is the other wire. to sound sassy. <laughs> it's just that uh, I, I really like the screw-on connectors. Uh, I am curious what other, how other builders have gotten around it. It's just that I'm a big fan of using this, these spur-off connectors everywhere. And when you put a, a spring-loaded connector, you've, you've made it impossible for me to do them. Unless I take that board off and solder on a new one, which is not within the realm of impossibility. I mean, I know we're going to have to do a lot of things to this printer once it's up and running to make tweaks and move wires and whatever, but wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to do that? So we have those guys in there. They actually have a fair amount of slack to them, which is good. They're probably going to need to muck off. Let's unbutton this guy up top here. Oh, that's my Ethernet. My Ethernet gets the air. You go back. My, uh, Yeah, <clears throat> I'm not usually an OCD person, but just these wires dangling everywhere is giving me flashbacks of the of the i3 Mega. The i3 Mega has wires hanging all over it, and if you have to move that thing, it's a, a complete shit show. <laughs> all right, let's clean up some stuff real quick. View. Okay, so we have up here, okay, we have Ethernet and both uh, E0 wires. They are reaching the end of the bed, okay. We'll have to come up with some way to take care of all the slack. Well, you yeah, know, but hot glue is ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's my issue. I wonder if you would sell me just that PCB blank, and I could put all my own connectors on there. I mean, this one I probably could, but it really sucks to solder, suck the holes clean and stuff. 
And that PCB board, that cartridge board, can't cost too much. Okay. Coffee has been deleted. Yeah, you're right. I don't eat a lot. It's just... I'm fuming that it's <laughs> at the way it's set up, that's all. I'm being cranky because it's late at night. I kicked my ass at the gym. <laughs> and I don't understand why this has to be so complicated. Wah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Okay, this white Ethernet. All right. Um, let's feed you up the same way. Let's cut off that little tab. Okay, Amanda's going to. Oops. I don't want to hit that microphone. Sorry, guys. Okay, that's going to go up over here against this thing. And hmm. So uh, let's see. Should I be securing this to the back of the printer, or should I be working this across the uh, over and across as well? Actually, I think the answer is, and you're going to tell me is, so what I could do, I mean, I can put it in the channel. For example, I can have it snap in right there in the center. my arm into pieces here on me. So I don't know if that shows you very well on this camera what I've done. So for this axis, I got this guy secure in this chain. Okay, so how does this lead up? Let me get rid of this big giant clamp here. So as this guy moves around here, and you sound great on the first power. All right, so do you have enough to make it to the corner? Not quite. Okay. So that cable isn't as bad as I expected. And then when the printer moves over here, Okay.
Yeah, there's a couple. I see what you're saying. And then the next fun part is going to be, you know, the running of the uh, stepper motor wires. Because, well, actually, I think I, I did the same thing you did. I got the extruders mounted here to the front. Do you have uh, the stepper wires going down the LCD hole too? Well, yeah, that's, see, that's one of my frustrations is, you know, I know right off the bat I want to enclose this thing, but here I am, you know, farting around here trying to run wires and their instructions aren't, <laughs> anyway, let's not kick the dead horse. All right. So my question is, is did you, uh, you said you ran them parallel. All right, so that's what I'm, I am doing as well. Actually, I screwed up already. I got this tangled up with the other wires. It's actually very easy to do. And how are you feeding those into the electronics box? So how does this look to you? Actually, I don't think the camera gives you enough of an angle to see that. A little bit better. Okay, so stepper motor, or extruder rather, and I'm running the, uh, uh, are you running these into that LCD hole as well, or, because you seem to have a good configuration, so I'd like to mirror that. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Because what I can do is I can, I got these 3D printed, you know, uh, 2020 clips. So I can certainly, you know, tuck it around and place them inside the 2020. Um, yeah, and they can go through the LCD hole as well. And then the uh, spiral wrap stuff, uh, we fix that. Boy, lots and lots of extra wire here. I don't want to 
to tighten anything up until I got both of them in. Yeah, I couldn't find, uh, I was surprised, you know, locally I could not find the uh, spiral wrap uh, shrink tubing. And I've always gotten that locally before, but, you know, whatever. In the world of Amazon, I'll, I'll find it elsewhere. <laughs> Tonight I'll definitely cue the printer up to uh, <laughs> print a whole bunch of these. At least in the same color. Right now I got orange. That's not exactly the prettiest. Okay, I don't like how close that comes to that belt and pulley. <laughs> but we'll fix that in a second here. Going out of order a little bit here, but. I'm blaming my OCD because I saw all these wires and was like, ah, I gotta do something with them. Okay. All right, now, let's stuff these wires in the channel here. post a link on Thingiverse for these for other guys who are wondering, hey, how did he do that? <laughs> okay, so how does that look on screen? How's my channel look? Does that uh, look like it's holding those guys up really decently? I, mean, I could certainly print a bunch more of these. Okay, and then these guys are going back here. Actually, if I wanted to be super worried about them, I can put one more. And if I have one more, dun, 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 I just saw it too. Yeah, I'll make more. Now, and of course I didn't wrap you around correctly. Alright, so we have all this mess coming in here. And before we worry about that too much, <laughs> and actually I can probably stuff most of this right in that channel. Front's going to be where anything that's going to be uh, clamped up. But yeah, there should go. Okay, so how's that routing looking? <laughs> These came off the FT5. The FT5 has <laughs> already donated parts to the cause. All right, so these guys can go inside this little channel. And then Okay. 
camera so you can <laughs> see what I've uh, attempted to do. Oh, I got a here. So I can certainly uh, print more clips to tuck this in here. Uh, the black wires are, are tucked in here. Which black wires do you think aren't tucked in? Did I miss something? Yeah. Yeah, those are, uh, uh, the ones that you're talking about, John, are, uh, are those guys. Oh, the black wires? Oh, you think I should run those inside that uh, as well? It's plausible. Fit in there. Oh, sorry. I forgot to. I thought I clicked the button here. Okay, so black wires. I gotta print more of the the bold ones here. Yeah, there are two types of clips here. One just kind of clips, and one has a bulge in the middle. So there we go. Well, that's uh, John. That's one of those things that I three D printed. Um, how does that look, Z one? No, I'm the same way. I, I like all the wires tucked away and, and hidden, and that's why I'm a little annoyed at how, how awful the other one looks. <laughs> These bowing tubes just... This PTFE is slippery, that, that doesn't want to stay there. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, okay, so let me, I have totally gone off track on the directions here. <laughs> uh, I think I, hey, 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 come on. Go easy on the paper there, kid. All right. Oh, yeah, we haven't done the uh, E0. Uh, so somehow I have to run another... Ethernet cable here, or uh, extruder cable underneath here. At least this one should be somewhat of a direct shot. Alright, so... Third one in. Okay, and then that dude should just go underneath. Okay, now the 
big question, the million dollar question here is, uh, let's uh, back this up here and lower this as I, as I wonder. That one will reach. Because at first glance, it doesn't look like it, but I could be wrong. Get all the stuff up here that I'm gonna get knocked over the minute I start tipping this thing around. Okay, I'm surprised. It's good. Alright. Now, the right way to do this would be to put some electrical tape or captain tape or something. Tipping this over keeps on being more and more fun. Because I don't want these guys to touch the belt. Alright, let's. Uh Oh, really? Good. I do not know if I'm doing this the right way or not. I'm just trying to keep it as far away from those belts <laughs> as possible. I'm sure I want to move this printer from one desk to another. So those wires don't snag on anything. I'm a happy camper. Pretty way of doing it, I'm sure. This someone will tell me. All right. One more, right smack in the middle of these guys, and we'll call that stuff good. Okay. 
anyone who wished to offer feedback on my outstanding tape job here. <laughs> All right, let's move the camera out of the way a little bit, and once again, let's... Things heavy. The tripod is snagged up on the cabling. As the wiring fun continues. <laughs> Okay, let's light that up for you guys. Okay, he is in. Those two guys are in. The LCD hole. Boy, we have a, <laughs> a lot of wire here. We got the Ethernet wire that's all wired up and. So what I should probably do is same story down here. I know I'm kind of crazy to try to organize some of this stuff, but I'm just trying to see what I'd like to do is at least have these somewhat orderly inside of here. There. Yeah, it's kind of a jack-in-the-box <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> at least the heat sink acts as a nice way to kind of trap everything. Uh, I can't see what you guys are saying. Where's my laptop? Uh, I have a touch screen, so it's kind of going wacky. Come on. Wow. I'd say Christmas has arrived early for you as well. Wow. I, uh, it was not me, but uh, I'd like to offer you my congratulations. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so that bottom one is done. I think that's routed in there pretty good. I'm not going to fret about the uh, wires there. Um, these guys, same story. These have got to get bundled up at some point. Uh, I can think of one solution for these two guys. Actually, I 
let's put this dude right here. any better but it's up and out of the way a little bit now the other thing that's a that's kind of a problem right now is these are the extra thermoresistors that I've installed in the bed since we're not going to use them right now, we're there for an emergency should the other one fail. We're going to have to tuck those guys. Oh, I can't really go under the bed, that would kind of kill them. But I can at least. Uh, One thing I can think to do is just <laughs> a few of them there. Actually, I can't do that because as the bed goes down, it's going to yank them. That's not a good idea. So these guys are just going to have to live their life right there, kind of in the corner. <laughs> uh, Uh, let me answer your question. Who told you to put those there? These, uh, I can't remember uh, who it was. Um, someone had mentioned before I adhere the, uh, uh, the heated mat to the bottom of the aluminum. Since it only has one thermoresistor, uh, you might want to add uh, some spares because if that ever fails, getting that off the bed is going to suck um, if it's a bad thermoresistor. So these are, uh, uh, these came from uh, TH3D. They're clone E3D. V6 hot ends, and uh, that's the bulb type uh, thermoresistors. So, uh, so we stuck those two. There's uh, one here and there's one here, so that in the event that these guys uh, fail, uh, if they do, uh, we have a backup and they're already wired in. All we have to do is uh, run the leads. So. I thought it was your idea. I was kind of surprised you were asking, but I was kind of, I was thinking back that, you know, that's, I've had a lot of people offer a lot of feedback. My question is, you know, how is that as far as wrapping them up? So that's, uh, I got these guys just kind of laying here. They're kind of tucked under the bed. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I'm just doing a little bit of wiring management here and I just couldn't think of any other way to, to deal with them. Okay, 
So going back to the instructions here briefly. Oh, I have to run upstairs in a second here. I'll put them on the bottom of the bed. Saying like, uh, um, stick one of those uh, guys here. I think I got a few extra. Come on, Molly. You're in the way. Okay, so it's way up there, so it's not going to affect the bed leveling one bit. Is that what you had in mind? <laughs> How does that look to you? Next, I'm going to move this laundry cup upstairs before I tip it over again. That is secure. Uh, let's see now. The next step here is take a peek. Okay, so we have to be all right. Yeah. Note which wire goes to which stepper. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> That would have been good to pay attention to, huh?
I might cheat on this step. <clears throat> yeah, I may just grab the multitester and test for continuity. Because I'm certainly not going to go through all that wire and try to figure out which is which. <laughs> okay, so. you from Drawing a blank on which one will give me continuity on this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, draw a blank and how to make my multi tester work properly.
could be wrong. Okay, try to get my multimeter here. Because I don't want to try to plug and unplug all that wire. And the cat is back in the chair where she does not belong. Okay, I got this set right. All right, so. Red. Why is my stepper wires not giving me continuity readings? Ah. <laughs> That's what I don't understand. Uh, the only thing I can think of is gotta have this. Gotta not have a stupid pin inside it. Okay, someone explain to me why my stepper wires are not giving me a continuity reading. <laughs> because I'm a little stumped.
Magic marker time. You have become zero. And zero. Does it matter which extruder is zero and one? Since I'm in the learning process here. Okay, let's make sure you guys are, are happy here. Okay. So my question, um, looking at the print nozzle uh, or the print head itself, so I'm assuming I want whatever is plugged into this guy. Okay, this happens to work out. Okay. So this dude is zero. And you are one. Zero is the left side. One. Let me make sure I got you right here. Yep, yeah, zero is the left tube. And one is the right tube. bit of slant here. Oh, wait a figure. Let's unbutton all of this stuff so I can Just a little bit more. Sort of this thing. There. That's the one that's killing me. Is my there we go. Uh, it is eleven PM, yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> You're making sure I'm honoring my bedtime. <laughs> progress steps and then I have to go a few steps back. <laughs> uh, actually let me put one thing in here. There. Yeah, definitely need more of these rounded dudes. Alright, so you are zero. Alright, well that was a 
problem with skipping this stuff. You've got to pay attention to what is what. So I put magic marker on. We're putting these connectors in after this thing is in is a royal pin in a blankety blank. crazy on you because I'm going to 3D print a lot of clips here plus stuff to clean it up a little. looking a little cleaner. There. So the one thing I did and uh, is I yeah let me go to the top view here as I wind down here real quick. So what I did is I made sure to note that on the wiring this is zero, and zero feeds out to, when you're looking at the front of the print head on the left side, and then this is one, based on the wiring, to where it goes on the board, and that is gonna feed into the right side. So, I you used a little permanent marker to scribble it on there as well. What have you got? Theodore. What do you have? Uh, it's harmless. There you go. Go, go back. Yeah. What is this? This is part of the... No, this is part of R2D2. That's one of his uh, booster rocket mounts, the little booger. Oh, Molly got it. <laughs> All right, the chat buffer has been kind of quiet. I hope everything's, I hope this hasn't been too awful to watch. Okay. So there is that. Okay, we are definitely, let me turn on the ultimaker. Okay, so the, uh, so the next steps here. Plug an end stop wire. Where do I have an end stop wire? Must be in the last. <laughs> so I have these packages that have end stop wires and limit switches, but I am left to assume that we're not going to be using these limit switches. 
Uh, at least I don't see yet where one marks the Z, but we don't have to worry about that if we're using a probe. And we're learning with you. Okay, I'm just making sure. Like I said, I. You guys are listening to me go grumble, grumble, grumble quite a bit, and I'm hoping it's entertaining. <laughs> That's the intent. Okay, so as I recall, Z is going to be the green guy. Yeah, and it's going to be the first one, the Z minus, I think. Uh, I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, four. And again, I gotta try to get my finger in here. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap this around all these little holders here. It's labeled. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a stinking mess in here. This whole try to make it orderly while I build it has uh, has been interesting because on my FT5, my goodness gracious, you open the back of that printer up and it's like, hang on, everything's gonna fall out. <laughs> All right. Now there's also a. Uh, am I dealing with more? Yeah, I'm dealing with more power line stuff. So I gotta run five from the top to ah oh man, not these spring loaded pieces of frustrating things. Okay, on the plus and minus. As much as I hate threading stuff into those uh, slots, I, I'm almost tempted to use solid core wire. <laughs> I really, really, really am. Um, okay, I got all kinds of extra wire here. I think I got some thin stuff in here included. Yep. So for five volt. Obviously, that's not going to be an issue. You guys in lasers. <laughs> okay, how much water do we really need here for this? Reading these instructions to make sure I, I get it all right. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I think 
think I have some of them. I can make this a little easier. Now I have more zip wire, which is cool. What did I do with that? So I had so much of it, and I wonder what I did. I did some uh, thin silicone wire. I'd love to use. stuff from, from oh, oops, sorry, sorry. Come on, cats. Sorry. And they are just totally in love with me and follow me everywhere. Which is a real pita. Alright, so I got some of these uh, bags of silicone wire, which is really, really slick stuff. Um But maybe a little, maybe a little on the thin side for the uh, for the task that this stuff is going to do. So I guess not. And let's pull you back up. question I gotta find out is I notice this back plate has room for a fan 
and uh, obviously we uh, want to keep those steppers cool because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be yanking those guys out and putting 2208s in. But my question is, uh, looks like I only got one positive power rail there. So I just got to figure out uh, how to wire in the 24 volt case fan. And what size is it? I don't think it's a 120. Uh, that's what I have on the uh, FT5. That thing blows out a lot of air. No, I won't have it fired up tonight. <laughs> nope. I'd like to think so, or I like to think that I'm stupid close to that. I just yeah, I don't like the idea of threading these things into these little connections. I hate those connectors. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. All my friends that are big into electronic projects are all about the Furrell connectors and all this other stuff and I'm dinking around with springs. I just don't think springs are safe. Alright, so now I don't know what the lithogram doesn't tell me what's positive, negative, whatever. Or does it? I see positive at the end. Uh, is that signal? SI, maybe? I guess I must assume negative is the middle. Yeah, there's a... Uh, <clears throat> that's a lot of the frustration. I mean, it's... You want to do it right the first time, and uh, it's awkward to get into these spaces. It, uh, I don't know. I can't tell you how many times I removed these pieces here just so I can get that stuff inside. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of issues would be solved if we just said that soldering is required. I mean, <laughs> I know 
on my FT5, the first thing we got rid of were those connector blocks for a lot of things. It was just such a hassle working with those. My favorite thing in the world is the uh, heat shrink tubing that has a little blob of solder in the middle. Oh man, I love that stuff. Yeah, well, I, you know, and, exp and again, I'm ranting, but you know, if I was on something that wasn't gonna be moving around, you know, that's, that's one thing, but the 3D printer, you know, it's gonna, especially on the hot end, eh. I gotta check. I ordered a bunch of stuff from Mouser when I started on my R2D2, and I wonder if I have some connector blocks that are. I know I have twos, I don't, but I don't think I have threes. Because I would like to replace that, the one on the uh, hot end. I like that he's making PCBs. I just. Well, stick to the right connector, please. Uh, I think positive is the bottle I said. Yep. Yeah. So we do look out here. Do, 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 do. But yeah, you're right. The ergonomics in here are tight. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm no electrician, but I, I work with a lot of people that are, and sometimes they look at my stuff and I go, no, 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 no. Here's what you want to do. So I've gotten into the habit of not being afraid of soldering, even though my soldering iron looked like a crayon for a long time. I was like, okay, I need to work on this. Um, there was an electrical store right down the road from me, and he retired and he closed it. And it, to give you an idea, it really rivaled Radio Shack. You went in there and you asked a question about a resistor or something, whatever complicated project you were working on, he'd know. Uh, you know, you just never got that kind of, you know, response at the Radio Shack before they closed down. Those guys were all about selling, you know, cell phones or whatever. They had no idea. But he had all that shrink tubing, he had all that, you know, uh, the wrap stuff. And of course with the demise of Radio Shack and small town stores in general, you were relying on, you know, mouse or DigiKey or Amazon. So there we go. Okay, so these guys would appear to be on there. And see, that's the thing with all these wires and moving them around at all. Uh, one tug and they're out. Okay, I'm I'm not sure what this one is on the bottom. I'm assuming that's going to be for it says fan, but I'm not sure the voltage and power. Maybe that's pre-done for a part cooling fan. That'd be kind of cool. So there we go. The uh, <laughs> the electronics bay is starting to look pretty stinking full. Oh yeah, I recognize these. I've I've got all kinds of these for my R two D two. So let's. Let's see what the next step is, because I might call it a night after this, but let's see. Okay, so we did we did the end stop wire from Z negative to the controller. That has been done. So we've done these little wires. So this step went pretty smoothly. Good, good. Uh, electronics, dual extruder, yep, we... Um, okay, he didn't have it in the face. Okay, so we were going to keep things on there, yeah. Oh boy, we are really at that home stretch here. We're, uh, we're doing the electronic board now. I was going to call it a night, but you know what? We're so close to... Of course, I say that very excitedly, and I'm hoping the last couple parts aren't broken or anything. Ah. 
Okay, so. Well, guys, um, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. for a minute there because I'm like I don't have any uh, spacers <laughs> but there they are they're all in that package Doo -doo -doo. And as you can see my desk is running out of room real quickly here all right let's see how this guy on Z1 where did you where did you mount yours? I mean, this thing can largely go anywhere. Oh wow, I gotta, looks like these holes did. They don't quite go all the way through here. Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of debris in that one, that one. Defects here. Come on, clean up. Okay, clean up aisle four. The uh, I'm curious how the guys with the pot really. Mine has a dent in the front. It does. Oh, it's got a scratch or something. Oh, is that really a scratch or is that a? Metal blob. Quick, let's see. Can't have scratches already. Okay, it was a booger. It came off. Phew. I was going to be like, man, you can't do this to me. High as the ribbon cable will go. Well, that's not a bad idea because it's no fun to be bending over all the time on the FT5 to try to read what it's doing. Okay, oh yeah, I got the uh, ultimaker powered up here. Let's, uh, let me go over here real quick. Familiar? Hmm. Okay, we did that the other night. Now there should be a file here, and under 3D prints, it should be like 2020 clips or something it's called. And do you think I would remember what folder they're in? Probably not. But what's nice is these previews. Um, so I'm able to see a preview of the uh, files. Because I want to print a whole bunch of those to, uh, okay, MT5, coolers, cooler files, that was the end stops, back by Groot, file file file, carry cutter, all kinds of pet thing over here. Scale, scalar cable clips, here we go. Um, no, it's not the right one. These are the 3030s. Uh, I gotta get a preview of the models here and sheesh. Unless it's sitting under the FT5 folder. 2020 extrusions cable clip collection. Hey, there it is. All 
All right. So what we need is a whole bunch. All right. Let's see. We want the. Let's get the caliper and let's see. I'm trying to figure the difference here. Do I want the cable clip five millimeter length? Yeah, because this has a little indent that'll push cable in, but right now <laughs> we got stuff coming out. Oh, wait a minute, it's five millimeter. That's how far that will stick out. Okay. That's the guy right there. Okay, we want a whole bunch of those. We want to, uh, dun, dun, dun. we're going to uh, duplicate and, uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Let's, uh, yeah, look at them all. Whee. Okay, there we go. So that will give us a whole bunch of those guys. Okay, so that's about 12. How many do I really need? Well, I can always make more. Okay, those are arranged. Let's, uh, let's make a few more. <laughs> One more time with enthusiasm. Here we go. That's what I wanted there. Thank you. Now we're going to do. Hoo wee. Boy, that would suck. All right, this is going to be printed on engine. Yeah, that's good. That's higher temperature stuff. I don't need support, so that's good. 20% will be fine. Two hours, that's fine. All right, and what are these guys gonna be called? 2020 clips. Let me name them something a little bit different real quick. So they stand out. Okay, so that, let me get that off our screens. print right there these guys will talk to each other yep octo print's happy yay all right so see this is what i'll be using on the fp6 as well too i i don't see uh, the lcd screen is a nice touch but i'm not sure i would really use it though a whole bunch right now all right and of course, you're not going to show me the same thing. Come on, show me it this time. There it is. Pop. All right. Yahoo. Okay, that's my set to Octoprint. <clears throat> so we'll have a whole bunch of those clips to clean up this wiring tomorrow. All right, next up is I just got to follow the instructions. All right, let's go to the other camera. And here we go. All right, well, first of all, you made a really good point. 
as he always does. Because Z1 power is the main. Giant LCD. Uh, do I have to take the uh, knob off first? I would assume I do. There it is. Oh, reset buttons might go there too. Cool. All right. So now we have the standoffs and all that. Assuming if this is going to go in a pie or something. Okay. So we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, you know it's funny. I, I got like five of those little red boards for all the uh, LCD screens I bought over the years. stop that always looks a little awful and it also doesn't fit come on come on rep rap project if you're gonna send me a button at least have it look decent oh, this looks like it came out of a Mendel Max from 2013 I mean that looks awful Just that will not fit the hole. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, let's see. We've had a tremendous amount of uh, military aircraft fighter jets lately. We had a bunch of uh, Saudi Arabia F-15s. I don't know if they were picking up some new ones or what, but they were in town, four of them, passing through. One at a time and slowly drop the space around. I wonder if 
the SD card is active in the uh, firmware. I know in the i3 Mega, I had to go in there and go turn it on in Merlin. Yeah, I saw a lot of guys were having questions about getting the uh, auto bed leveling working. They were saying that the mesh wasn't turned on by default or some other stuff. I, I haven't had a chance to look at the firmware. I'm hoping my friend Keith will reappear. He's kind of vanished on me. He really knows Merlin super well and I'd love to asked him a couple questions, but he's been active on Twitter, but he hasn't responded to my messages lately. So I figured he's just been busy all night. Okay. And it kind of stinks you can't cover that uh, speaker up. Remove after washing. No, we didn't wash. Oh, that other must be a uh, pass through for adjustments. Okay. No oh, printer's cooling out. Very good. Hmm. You gotta kind of watch what's going on here as you tighten this up. The PCB starts to flex a little, like, oh, I might want to back that off just a little. Let's check on the alternator real quick. TH3D version that he's made for a lot of the. Uh, oops. No, that's good. Okay. Um, the CR10s and things like that. Alright, let's have this off. Okay, and then it looks like I'm doing an M5 show. guys in. I'm going to look at the uh, ribbon cable, see how far they can move, and then the Ultimaker is printing a lot of the uh, clips. Hopefully tighten up some of this uh, wiring. But yeah, thanks for your suggestions, and uh,
someone has <laughs> cleaned my lap. Yep. Hi. Which one? Hi. Yes. Ah. Oh, is it? Is it break time? <laughs> All right. Just for a minute or two, okay? We're almost done, kiddo. EXP 1 and 2. Well, let's see. I got so many cables sitting over there, I don't know which one is which. One is which? I can't tell. Oh, well, this is why I took a picture of the of the board a little while ago. Just for a situation like this. Let's see. I can find a picture of the NKS door. Here we go. Upside down. Let's see. EXP1 is on the bottom. The 2 is on the top. So, I see what he's saying. If you mount it up high, it's a whole lot easier to, to work with. Um, I think right now,
Okay, why can't I? is making contact. Oh, it's it's the way that the uh ah, that sucks ass. For some reason, it's the way that it is making contact with the uh, back of the wire against the edge of the opening. Let me show you. See that I try not to into contact with the top of the electronic box. Let me move the wires here to make sure they're not a factor. these right here are binding the back. Yep, going on midnight, yeah. Alright, so what's happening is I was concerned that these wires were gonna interfere, and it turns out they're not, which is good. Uh, if they were, I could still write it down over here. But yeah, the uh, the back of these guys. channel. And make sure that you're turned. See right here. Let me uh, bring it up a little. Top of these guys are smacking into this. Biscuit. 
Uh, one thing I'm going to change real quick while I have this thing opened up. Good, good. Alright. Alright, so then the only wires that are coming through are my uh, E zeros. I still can't figure out why. So I have to do to get you in there. Okay, let's get you in first and see what happens. Man, I cannot get that in there. Oh, getting frustrated. Getting frustrated. That's not what it tells us to do, but um, I think good luck getting your fingers in there. But I think logic hasn't been our friend tonight. <laughs> Why not? Actually, that's a that's a good picture of the problem, actually.
Well, that's what I try to do. The uh, if you go in behind, uh, the camera's not going to want to focus for you, but let me show you. Okay. The plugs are are up high. Sorry about the lack of focus here. The uh, so yeah, I just I don't have to ask John what the workaround is for that. I just don't get it. I mean, uh, yeah, the only other worker I can think of is just not use those bottom screws at all. Or just tighten them up. It just sort of looks, looks like they're used, I guess. Ugly to me, but hmm. given, <laughs> given the options in the moment. I mean, it does bring it up higher. But, you know, ideally, you'd like to have it, you know, look nice and just making contact. Hey Simon, you're very welcome. Glad you find them useful. I've enjoyed learning from others and I figured, hey, maybe I can make this in a format other people can understand really well too. So thank you. Well, I'm going to hang this here. I'm as high as I can get it. Well, could but the problem is if I raise this panel up, then you know this is yeah. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to ask about it. Or I'll post it on the group and find out you know what's going on here. <laughs> is it just me or you know maybe maybe this just needs to be cut differently. You know, maybe this should come down a little bit. I don't know. 
I don't know. Okay. Let's see. the ulti maker crank it on there. To, uh, oh, let me uh, go over here. Uh, is that camera on? Yeah, it is. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a night <laughs> shortly here. There we go. Let's get that camera back a little bit. Because I'm wiped. <laughs> I'm going to find the other laptop over here. All the maker is churning out a bunch of uh, clips that we're going to use. Um, let's see. Multi meter. I feel like I made a lot of progress tonight. I'm a little disappointed in a few sections. Uh, you know, I wish the wiring was was better laid out. Um, you know, things of that nature. This ACM thing not lining up or the uh, being blocked by the uh, hole size. That's that's a little frustrating, but um, what can you do? But overall, a good time tonight. It's just uh, well, you have to guess how to do a lot of this. Um, these small steps. It should only take a couple minutes, uh, take a whole lot longer. So uh, some of that is my fault from moving the extruder from one side to the other. Um, and you know, a, a fair amount is on their side too there just because the documentation just seems a little, you know, needs some improvement anyway. So there we go. Uh, I thank you guys for watching the build tonight and uh, offering tremendous amounts of good feedback here. Uh, I hope I was able to offer you guys equally as much feedback on the questions that you asked. Um, I think tomorrow night we're going to, uh, well maybe tomorrow will be the, uh, the day we uh, boot this thing up and try. Um, I'm definitely going to send a message or post a, uh, a message to the Fogotech group about that last particular uh, step right there. Uh, I'm still concerned about all these wires dangling everywhere but you know if you saw the i3 Mega, oh my god that thing, when you move that printer there is literally wires falling everywhere so <laughs> there's always something uh, just checking the buffer real quick so uh, just to wrap up make sure you check the uh, comment I'm sorry not the comment section that's good too uh, make sure if you're watching this on the replay check down in the description uh, you're gonna see that I'm gonna put like a whole kind of summary of what we did tonight uh, what what you know, what worked what didn't that kind of thing uh, for those of you guys that are still watching right now thank you for watching this late uh, I don't know what time it is where you guys are at, but it is 12, 13 a.m. Once again, my bedtime has been shot to heck. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not a subscriber already, hit the button. If you're looking at buying one of these printers, make sure you take advantage of the discount code that's in the description. And as always, if you're not a subscriber, become one. So that's it. I wish you all a good night. You know, I'm going to say it as I always do. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Stay nerdy. Thanks for watching, and we'll get to the next step tomorrow. Have a good night, guys.